This video demonstrates the basic editing features of Improviser, Improvisation Advisor software. I'm going to start from pretty much the very beginning. So first thing to do, if you've never used the app before, is to locate the installation of Improviser in your Applications folder. Then, so we're using version 10, which is the latest version as of September 2018. Uh, double click the Improviser logo and that should launch the program for the first time. You see the splash screen come up while the vocabulary is being loaded. Then this screen will show only the first time that you launch the program. And what it's intended to do is indicate your options for setting up your MIDI uh, output, which is how you're going to be hearing the sound. So we click the open MIDI preferences first of all, and uh, there'll be a variety of different devices, at least one usually. Uh, Jervil is the one that is supplied with Java, which is the language in which the application is implemented. And although it doesn't sound great, uh, it's, it's always there. There are some other ones that uh, I use, some other MIDI synthesizers. I'm going to use the Contact 5 virtual input, but if you want to use that uh, you'll have to download it yourself uh, as a, as a third-party application. So for now, we're going to use it because it gives us a rather robust sound. <clears throat> okay, once we have selected our MIDI output, we also have the option of MIDI input. Uh, for this demo, I'm not really going to use it, but let's say we could input things with a MIDI keyboard. So then we'll save those preferences. And now we see the basic uh, improviser lead sheet form and what we want to do is open up something that has some chords in it. So this NC indicates no chord, not very interesting. And if we go to our uh, our file menu, we can open a lead sheet and there will be a tutorial which uh, is suggested for this demonstration. So we don't have to save any modifications. There aren't any. And uh, then we can, once we have the tutorial open, assuming that we have a MIDI set up properly, we can play the tutorial. So that's uh, a 12 bar blues. And it has the first eight bars are filled in with kind of a riff. And it's left up to the user to try to fill in the remaining eight, uh, remaining four bars. So uh, this is where the, the actual demonstration is going to start. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that as I move the cursor from measure to measure, these brackets with two on, under them show up. On, uh, on the cursor. And essentially these lines are construction lines on which notes can be placed. So two indicates there are two subdivisions of one beat. And that's the default. When we when we click uh, on, on any of these lines which are known as slots, we will get a note there. And so let's try here, let's try a G. And if you don't like the note that you got, you can always click over it. Also, the note that you click will generally be longer than you ultimately want, uh, but when you click the next note, you will get something that uh, overwrites that, that length. So no need to worry about the duration of the note itself. Let's click in here at A, and then let's say a B flat, and C, F, Okay, so the idea is that there's only going to be a monophonic melody line. No chords are possible. If you don't like the note, you can simply click over it. That's one of the ways to change change the note that you clicked on. And then once you have uh, clicked in a few notes, then you can play the portion that you click, and I'll demonstrate how that, that works. Okay, so... Here in this box is what is called the selection. And the selection is uh, generally a way in which you can focus on certain notes 
in the piece to the exclusion of others. So there's a basic move that you want to learn in order to use improviser efficiently, and that is how to deal with the selection. It's a little bit non-standard, but uh, it's designed to make things go fast once you, once you get the idea. So here we have a selection already showing, and now if I hold the shift key and select any, uh, any slot within that selection, what I'm going to get is just that slot being selected. So the slot, the selection changes to that slot. If I select outside of the current selection, such as here, what's going to happen is the selection is extended to that outside point. So here again, I'm holding the shift key and I'm going to click on another slot. And I can extend the selection either direction. So here, and once again, if I want to just single that down to a single slot, then I can click inside the selection like that. If I want to go to some other slot, what I'll do is I'll move the cursor to that slot and I'll double click. So first click is going to extend the selection. The second click is going to uh, focus it down onto that one slot. So you can kind of get used to that move as a double click move it does real fast even though it really is two separate two separate moves that are being done. So that's the, the main thing that's a little bit non-standard about the editing interface, but it's well worthwhile learning if you're going to use improviser uh, to any extent. Okay, so let's, let's continue our little melody line here. Uh, so let's play it again. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I've got a C13 flat 9, so I'm going to put in a D flat. Um, okay, so notice that I first entered a note and then I changed it. And the way I'm changing it is by means of the keys, which you, can, you cannot see where my fingers are, but I'll describe it to you. There are a couple of different ways to move notes around using the keys. So here's the note that we're focused on. And if we press the E key, that's going to move the note up a half step. If we press the D key, it moves the note down a half step. If we press the W key, it moves the note up harmonically, which means that it's going to be a note that kind of goes with this chord. So the expectation here is with the W key, we're going to move it to uh, E flat rather than D flat. Okay, and okay, that did not really do what I was expecting. There's our, there's our D flat. Um, and if I want to move it down harmonically, I can press the S key. And we've got, uh, so basically, pressing the S key takes it down to uh, the next note that's, that's uh, compatible with the chord. Okay, I didn't mean to do that, so uh, I'll illustrate how to undo something you just did. I accidentally pressed this note, and let's say I want to undo that, so I'll just press the Z key, and that undoes the current uh, the current note that has been entered or the current move. And you can you can press the Z key a number of times and take it back any number of steps that you wish. So this is taking back through the moves that we made previously. You can kind of see. And then if I want to go forward again, I can press the Y key and that will uh, redo some of those notes that I, I played. Okay, so far, so uh, let's continue on with our melody creation. Here I want to go to E flat. And then I'm going to skip ahead a slot and move to If I want to uh, stop a note and make it into a rest, I use the R key to insert a rest. So, okay. 
Okay, now I've got the four bars at the end completed, so let me uh, play that by making selecting those four bars only. <laughs> And then once we have that completed, you can see how it fits with the entire tune. So I'm going to press the I key, which is equivalent to pressing the, the play button up here, and that'll play the entire uh, entire. <laughs> So that, that sounds reasonably good. And then what we can do is then save that as something, let's call it uh, tutorial, tutorial completed, I guess. Or let's call it completion number one, since we might entertain doing it more than one time. <clears throat> All right. So you might wonder, how am I going to remember all of these different keystrokes? So here's the idea. These are actually in various menus up at the top of the menu bar. And the keystrokes themselves are just shortcuts. And you can use the, um, the menu itself uh, rather than the shortcuts if you wish. So these give you various ways of editing. So what I just did was I cut out my melody. I didn't really want to do that. So I'm going to bring it back by doing undo. And now I've got the thing that I just cut back again. Uh, so let me explain a few of the different editing moves that you can make. Let's say that we want to take a selection and let's move it uh, up or down on the staff. So if I want to move the entire selection up, I can press the E key. Or down, I can press the D key. And you'll notice the coloring of the ocean notes changes when we do that, and I'll explain the significance of those colors in a bit. Uh, so another thing we can do is to copy the selection, and if I press the C key, that's going to copy the melodic selection that's there, and then once I have copied it, I could paste it over any other portion of the tune. So let's paste that now to the last two bars of the measure of the tune. Okay, it may or may not make sense in this case, I'm just using this as an illustration. Uh, so how would that sound? Probably not not as great as the original okay the fact that um yes so let's play the whole thing just okay maybe maybe not so great uh so uh assuming i don't want to go with that i will undo it by pressing the z key again and that will bring it back to where it was before so once you have a selection, you can play just that selection by pressing return, which is what I just did. Sometimes you'll be working on a tune and you'll have a selection, say somewhere in the middle, and you want to play not just that selection, but that selection all the way to the end of the chorus. And so in that case, uh, we hold the shift key when we pr press return, and it will do that. Okay, so, so far I've illustrated copying. You can also do similar actions if you want to cut out a portion of your melody. You can use the X key, and that will cut it out and replace it with uh, a rest, or if there was a note before, it might extend that note into the place where you've cut. If I want to undo that cut, I can just press Z and bring it back, or another alternative would be to cut it and then just paste it using the V key. So V is going to paste that melody back uh, where it was, and uh, originally I also used the V key to paste this 
portion of the melody over on the end of the piece. So you're probably accustomed to apps that either use the command or the uh, control key to do cutting and pasting. And we don't do that here for a very uh, specific reason that's designed into the software. So using the V key with the uh, cut, cut key X or V for paste or C for copy without control will just copy the melody portion. On the other hand, if we wanted to uh, copy the melody and the chord, so let's say we want to make this selection, we want to copy not just the melody, but the melody and the chords too, we can use the control X for that, cut it out, and then move that down here and do control V, that will paste the melody and the chord in that position in the lead sheet. So once again, with the control, it deals with both the uh, chord and the melody. If I just want to paste the chord portion, I use the shift instead of the control, and that pastes, pastes the chords, but not the melody. So once again, with no uh, shift or control, you're going to get the melody only. With uh, control, you're going to get the melody and chords, and with shift, you're just going to get the chords. So let's try to bring this back to where it was before I illustrated these cut and paste operations. Uh, not quite there. Okay, so I just recall that uh, I disabled the undo of the chord pasting because there was a bug that was manifest uh, when, I, when we do that. So what I'm gonna have to do here is manually go back and change the chords to what they were originally. Or alternatively, what I can do is copy this melody. This is actually gonna be easier. I'll copy the melody, and now I'm gonna to revert to the original reach lead sheet. So reserve, revert to save lead sheet. That will give me the chords back the way they were. And okay, so everything is cool now. All right, uh, so there again, you've got the cut operations, cut melody, cut chords, cut melody and chords. You've got cut, copy melody, copy chords, paste melody, so on. And then if you wanted to cut all the melodies in all choruses, you could use this option, which has no shortcut. Um, another thing we can do is transpose. I've already illustrated this using the key shortcuts, but you can transpose the melody up a semitone, you can transpose the chords up, or you can transpose both the chords and melody together. And here again, un, uh, with, with no additional control, we have um, just the melody. With shift, we have the chords, and with control, we have the chords and the melody.